Yeah, we have our next speaker, Ms. Lavinia Gabriela Carpen from National Institute of Laser, Plasma and Radiation Physics from Romania. And her research focuses on tungsten particle synthesis and particle characterization related to nuclear fusion and nanotechnology applications. Good afternoon again. My name is Lavinia Carpen, and today I will present a part of my work titled The Interaction of Tungsten Dust with Human Skin Cell. To introduce myself, I'm from Romania. I'm a PhD student and I'm at the beginning of my uh, third year. I work at the National Institute for Laser Plasma and Radiation Physics in a group led by Mr. George Dinescu. Regarding my PhD project, the first part of my thesis is based on tungsten nanoparticle synthesis using plasma processes. And the second part is based on tungsten material application related to nuclear fusion and nanotechnology. I will continue my presentation with the purpose of my work. In the tokamak reactor, some tungsten components can interact with plasma, for example, the diverter. After this interaction, this component can form dust, which represents a mixture of uh, nano and microparticles. Besides the changing of plasma properties, these nanoparticles can be released in the environment in case of a nuclear accident. So the problem is, can this tungsten nanoparticle pose a health risk for people? This is the reason why I intend to study the tungsten nanoparticle toxicity. We synthesize uh, tungsten nanoparticle using magnetron sputtering gas aggregation technique. You can see in this slide the schematic representation of the system and also the process parameters that were used for nanoparticle synthesis. <laughs> For my biological studies, I used only round flower-like nanoparticles, uh, and these nanoparticles were characterized by approximately 100 nanometers in diameter. After synthesis, these nanoparticles were added in the cell media. Um, using this method, I obtained a stock concentration, and afterwards, this solution was sterilized. Based on this solution, on this top solution, I prepared different solutions with different concentrations. Further on, I will compa compare only um, lower concentration with higher concentration. And uh, these uh, lower and higher concentration meanings are presented in this slide. That means under or above 100 micrograms per milliliters. I base my study on the fact that in case of a nuclear accident, nanoparticles interact firstly with human skin. So this is the reason why I chose fibroblast cells from human skin tissue. This cell line is called BZATCC and it's a standard cell line. In order to evaluate the cytotoxicity of tungsten nanoparticles, I use the MTS viability test. This MTS, represents a chemical salt that upon interaction with an enzyme, an enzyme that exists only in a viable cell, is transformed into another chemical compound called formazone. And this new chemical compound can be highlighted using optical methods because the formazone presence can be observed in wells by the change of the dispersion colors. Using this MTS viability test, I could observe that at the low concentration of tungsten nanoparticles, these are not toxic for human skin cells. This result is represented in this uh, graphic because no difference in viability is observed between the control sample and um, the low concentration samples. But when I added a higher concentration of nanoparticle over the cells, the nanoparticles effect on the medium color interfered with the optical measurements. So uh, new methods for tungsten cytotoxic evaluation are required. Further on, I used a scanning electron microscopy for the tungsten evaluation, toxicity evaluation. I used secondary electron method firstly. Using this method, I was able to see the nanoparticle that covers the cell surface, but um, how you can see in this uh, slide, highlighted with the red circle. 
along with the um, secondary electron um, method, I used the scatter electron method. Using this new method, I could observe the inside of the cell, under the cell membrane. So you can see the difference between these two methods uh, in this slide with red, respectively green shapes. In the next, next slide, in this picture, you can see, the, you can observe how nanoparticles interact with cell at higher concentration in contrast to the control sample. You can observe that cells are not like the control sample one, attached on the surface and interconnected. In contrast, they remain singular and the laptop particle covers cells and penetrate the membrane. Moreover, at different magnification, nanoparticles are observed on and inside the cell. Therefore, tungsten nanoparticles present certainly affect the cell viability. These results were published in a book chapter and uh, on art articles. Um, articles on the same subject were published in, by a group from France. Uh, supervised by Mr. Grisoria, with whom we have a very close collaboration. Um, moreover, some of the nanoparticles that were studied were synthesized in our group. Concluding with this study, I was able to discover that tungsten nanoparticles are toxic for tissue cells only at the higher concentration, which means above 100 micrograms per milliliter. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Lavinia. It was indeed a very enlightening presentation.